Praying Out the Sabbath, October 19th, 2024. But first, please help my humble channel to grow, like, subscribe, share, comment, any combination thereof. Why? Because you're beautiful on the inside and on the outside. That's why. So I'm going to start doing this series of videos, praying in the Sabbath, praying out the Sabbath, to help hold myself accountable to pray in and pray out the Sabbath in a timely manner. Today, I did not do that. Um, it's the end of Sabbath. It's a little after 10 p.m., and I just finished praying out the Sabbath. My prayers will typically last about 15 minutes, and it ends with me reading Psalms 92. That's Friday sunset, and that's Saturday sunset. It's just a tradition that I made up, but we are supposed to, to pray in the Sabbath. We're supposed to do something. If you're a Messianic believer, which is a reference to Messianic Judaism, these are Jewish folks who believe that Jesus Christ is Messiah. They pray in the Sabbath. They understand the New Testament and the Old Testament better than just about anyone overall because they're Jewish. Culturally, they understand the Bible, and, and it's written in a very Jewish way. And so this is something that I do, even though I don't do it the way probably messianic believers do it when i after god has defeated this program i will i will eventually go back to or, or really to be quite honest i want to start a messianic congregation which means i will need to be a little bit more educated well a lot more educated in messianic judaism so but that's that's for many months perhaps even years down the road so, I noticed today that, so, so the first thing I want to say is this. I went to sleep later than I would normally go to sleep. I normally go to sleep at about 10 a.m. I just have been going to sleep around that time for, for a few days. And I ended up staying up till 12 p.m. So, needless to say, I woke up. When I woke up, it was after 9 already, which is quite a bit after Sabbath. So, I think it was 9.41 when I looked at the watch. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if you could hear that, but I tried to say the word love every time I sneeze. <coughs> and so that would be praying out the Sabbath literally over three hours late. That's not good. But God is merciful and even though when I first woke up, it's, it's never, and God's merciful, it's never easy for me to get out of bed. I can have slept really well, and I slept pretty doggone good overall, praise the Lord by his grace. But it's still never easy for me to get out of bed. So I ended up meditating on the Lord for a little while. Um, typically, I have the book of Revelation playing, but I, I, have, I have it recorded three times over and over. That lasts about three hours, three hours and a half. And it had already played out completely. The way I pray in the Sabbath is I pray, I acknowledge that God created us. He created all things. That's part of the reason why we pray in the Sabbath is to acknowledge that God created the heavens and the earth, the universe, all of humanity, all living beings, all that lives and breathes and exists, God created. So we want to praise him for that. We want to acknowledge that he created all things. We want to acknowledge that he gave us the Sabbath as a day to rest. God's word says that those of us who are slaves are to have a day of rest. Our work animals are to have a day of rest. All people are to have a day of rest. That we're not supposed to treat our body as though it were a metal tool that can be used seven days a week. He gave us a Sabbath day as a day again. To, uh, well, as a blessing, as a gift, as a day to be happy, and then as a day to, to rest, and then a day to keep holy unto him, acknowledging that he created us. When I finish my prayers, I will read Psalms 92. So I read Psalms 92 twice a week, and I've been doing that for over a year. I would think by now that I would have Psalms 92 memorized. And I was trying to say Psalms 92 when I wasn't even able to say it. It's um, it is good, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, 
to sing praises to your name, O Most High. I barely finally memorized chapter, uh, verse 1. But my favorite verse in, in Psalms 92 is actually Psalms 92, 11, and I intentionally memorized that. And that is, my eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. Because all of us TIs can relate to that. What they're doing to us is evil. Assailants are people that assail you or they come at you constantly. And it's not just because the verse is a powerful verse. It's because God has revealed to me, God has shown me what's going to happen to the agents of this program. They don't believe it. They'll believe when, when, when this program, and we're talking about child trafficking, we're talking at first and foremost, but we're also talking about the TI program and a lot of other evil that the deep military, deep state, industrial complex is perpetrating all over the world. All of it's going to come to a screeching halt. Then they'll believe. They'll believe when they see. Because they're all like doubting Thomas's. But it will come to the end. It, it, it doesn't matter. They don't see it. I've seen it. I've seen that they will be surveilled. They will be monitored everywhere they go, just like us TIs are. They will be under the government's microscope. They will be prohibited from movement. They will not be able to even leave the city. The only travel that they will be able to do is within the city they live. And they will get in trouble if they try to leave the city that they live. In. If they try to leave the state that they live in without getting approval first, and that approval may or may not be given to them, they will get in big, big trouble. When they register all these folks who are participating in this program, they're going to register all of them. They have databases on all these folks. They have databases on all of us, but they have, they're going to come and register all of them. They're going to make them all sign paperwork. The chief handlers will be taken away in handcuffs. And I, what they do to the chief handlers is going to be much more extensive. They're going to process and register everyone who participates in this program. Surveilling them, monitoring, not allowing them to travel. But the, the chief handlers, they will take them away. They're going to be handcuffed to the front of their bodies. And they will be taken away in white vans that will be followed. And it may not be white vans all over the nation, but the vision that God gave me, it was all white vans in Cheyenne. And there were multiple white vans. The white vans will be accompanied by a sheriff's vehicle. Each sheriff's vehicle will only have one sheriff in it because they will not use law enforcement that participates in this program. They will not use sheriffs, police officers, these people that participate in the program, they will not be used. So they're going to have one sheriff guarding like seven different government workers in these big vans that are going to be hauling all these chief handlers away, these higher ranking people in the program. They're going to be hauled away in handcuffs. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. Their time's coming and it's coming soon. I don't have a day. I don't have a day, but I have seen it. The Lord gave me the vision about this multiple times every day for months. So much so that it became annoying to me. I thought, I have got to get rid of my vindictive heart. I want to see this happen to them. And I keep thinking this thought obsessively. And it's really annoying. And I shared this, what I was seeing with another TI who God has given him a lot of Pro prophetic words prophetic words for me where he told me stuff was going to happen and it happened just like he said because it came from the Lord he's the one who told me what you are seeing is not you being vindictive and wanting to see something bad happen to all of the agents of this program what you are seeing is God is giving you a vision of what he is going to be doing to them my eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. And I'm not fully sure what they're even going to be doing to the ones that they arrest, that they handcuff to the front of their bodies and, and walk them away. 
I have no idea. Are they going to jail? Are they going to prison? Are they going to be put? Are they going to have chips put in them so that they can truly be monitored everywhere they go at all times? I have no idea. I have no idea. All I know is they're all taken away in handcuffs. Uh, my eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. And so Psalm 92 is a, is, a, is a Sabbath psalm. It is a song specifically for the Sabbath. That's why I read that psalm at the beginning of Sabbath and at the end of Sabbath. Someday I will have that whole psalm memorized. Right now I only got one verse officially memorized and perhaps even two. Um, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. So perhaps two verses. And I believe the, the, the chapter is like 13 or 14 verses long. So I'm going to be doing this for a while as a way of helping to keep myself accountable. That is, if, if I don't pray in the Sabbath, when the Sabbath starts, and when the Sabbath ends, or at least within an hour of sunset on Friday, within an hour of sunset on Saturday, um, I will be able to be held accountable by putting it on my YouTube channel, I believe the Lord is going to empower me to be faithful to Him. Today, for the first time in, in weeks, maybe longer, I begin to sense that God is manifesting Himself stronger and stronger. And once again, He's making this program weaker and weaker in my life so god gets stronger and stronger like this it's like one of those charts where it goes up in trajectory but there's still ups and downs so now i'm coming out of a down which is i don't want to pray this program's not that serious anyway oh well it's because the lord's protecting me and if i don't pray it's going to get serious because the lord's going to let me have a taste of this program and so now, this last week, the Lord has been chastening me, making me pray in a more timely manner. The fact that, you know, I woke up way after Sabbath, but still prayed, like, like I got up, peed, washed my hands, and then immediately prayed. I don't typically wash my hands after I pee, but if, I, but if it's just prior to praying, then I like to wash my hands because I'm raising my hands to the Lord the whole time, and I like to raise clean hands to Him. And so I prayed right after. And that, to me, in my heart, that's acceptable to the Lord. The Lord knows my sleep is crazy. He knows I never know when I'm going to go to sleep, when I'm going to wake up. And if I wake up after Sabbath, even if I woke up and it was after midnight, though it would still be acceptable for me to pray in or pray out or pray in the Sabbath after midnight since that's when I happen to wake up. That's uncommon. That can happen. But intentionally putting it off to play video games, to watch YouTube shorts, this is where, or just because I don't want to do it, is unacceptable to the Lord. It's disrespectful to him. I feel like he's merciful under these circumstances, but he's not going to be merciful to me if I'm just willy-nilly putting off the Sabbath. So I praise the, the Most High God. I thank him for making me pray in the Sabbath in as timely manner as I could have, or pray out the Sabbath. I prayed in the Sabbath in a respectful time because I did pray it within an hour of Sabbath starting. Um, and I praise him that he is, again, manifesting himself stronger and stronger. He renders this program feeble. It's not a feeble program. The program's highly effective. It's highly destructive. But with the presence of God, he makes it feeble. So what gets through to me, what I can feel of DEWs, of noises. The Lord don't let it annoy me. The Lord don't let it physically hurt me. The Lord doesn't let it cause me to stop praying. Um, he doesn't let it frustrate me or get me to flip out or to be uh, distraught or emotionally upset. So I praise and glorify and worship the most high God of the Bible forever and ever. I send him my love to all y'all beautiful born again TIs. Get to know the Lord. God bless.